Hey everybody, it's Paul Ramsey and I am joined by Melissa Tears who is presenting at the 2017 NGH convention. She's going to be talking about rewiring the brain for change. It's a two hour on Saturday, August 12th. And uh, let's see, we're on becoming a neuroplastician. That's the subtitle. That's pretty cool. Melissa, how are you? I'm good. I'm also actually teaching a, a pre-conference. Are you? On, um, oh, yeah. I'm teaching a two-day pre-conference. The first time I did that was last year. Okay. Um, and it was a lot of fun. Um, basically teaching, you know, uh, my integrative hypnosis, okay. uh, many of the different pro protocols, and, uh, you know, of which, you know, we flesh out the self-directed neuroplasticity frame and the different ways that you can be more strategic in right. um, in rewiring old patterns. Cool. So, you know, it's some of my favorite uh, techniques and processes from, you know, my full course yeah. um, that I feel kind of creates uh, a cohesive framework uh, cool. within which to do almost cool. any type of issues. You know? All right, well, I'll tell you what. Stay with me on, let's, let's, we'll do the, let's stay, let me stay on the two hour. I'm going to come back and do another interview with you and we'll talk about the pre-convention and we'll really give you a full, um, another interview devoted to that. Okay, I'll make sure Excellent. that I do that. I'll make sure they do that. So, uh, this two hour on Saturday, August 12th, is your, your write up here says they're going to focus on strategic techniques and the process for encouraging neuroplasticity. They're going to learn the key components for memory reconsolidation to rewrite implicit pre-verbal programs. Oh, Melissa. Okay, <laughs> as well as <laughs> self-directed neuroplasticity. Now, I am nowhere in your league about this stuff, but I do love it. I did a series of interviews with my good friend, Dr. Manny St. Victor, who, who studied at Harvard uh, under a leading neuroplastician. And uh, so I love this stuff and we're not going to get too deep into it. Although I know you can, cause I want to make sure people come and spend their time with you, but just tell me like for the practitioner who maybe hasn't even touched this stuff is, is this for anyone or is this for people who are like already got a foundation? What are we looking this, at? Uh, this is for anyone and everyone. Okay. I mean, I'm a bit of a zealot when it comes to, you know, this, this type of, of understanding and perspective on the work that we do. Yeah. Because, uh, one of the cooler aspects about um, the way that I put this together is that it fits in with any practitioner's style. So I typically train um, therapists and, and doctors to, you know, use integrative hypnosis um, and they work it in, you know, with whatever practice they have. But it's also good for every single client to learn how to rewire their own brain. So let's just back up a little bit and, yeah. and um, talk about why it's good for uh, all hypnotists to learn. And one of the things that I always point out is that if you've been doing change work and you've been successful and you've helped people to actually change something, then you're already a neuroplastician. Right. <laughs> you're already helping people to rewire their brain. Yeah. Um, you just maybe don't think of it that way. If you have done anything that did not require constant repetition and yet have helped someone to change their phobic response or trauma and things like that, then you've already been playing with memory reconsolidation, right? So, um, there's really two forms that I go over uh, of neuroplasticity. And one, as you mentioned, was the kind of self-directed neuroplasticity frame. And that is um, a protocol I designed that can pretty much be utilized to change any habituated pattern of thought, of feeling, and of behavior. So pretty much anything that clients would come to see yeah. us for. Um, and it's a skill set and an overview that I give to all of my clients, right? So they leave my first session with an understanding of how to rewire their brain. And I can bullet that in less than a minute, you know, like I've got it down. I've got an hour and I need to do a lot. Um, 
And so I share that with my clients as well as a bunch of different pattern interrupts that are all techniques in and of their own right, right? So some of the uh, pattern interrupts are stimulating the vagus nerve. Um, some stimulate bilateral synchronization of the brain. Some techniques are, you know, faster tapping techniques. Um, so we just, you know, get at many different alternative brain patterns to give them to interrupt their own pattern. And right. so that is why I call it self-directed because this is what they take away. So every time you have a craving, you get out of that state in any number of ways. Every time you feel anxiety, you can get out of that state. So the, the protocol is really good in that it covers a few different levels. First level I tell my client is you're going to be able to stop it. Like whatever it is, whether it is a craving, whether it is a compulsive feeling, whether it is anxiety, the first level of this protocol, you'll be able to stop it. You'll be able to get out of it. The next layer is to understand that every time you do that, you're fostering new neural connections every time you stop it and veer into a different um, emotional state, physiological state, brainwave state. Yep. Um, the third level is where we get more strategic. And that's where uh, having an understanding of memory reconsolidation and neutralizing specific triggers, right? Comes yep. in handy. Yep. And that's where, you know, I gotta say, when I learned about um, you know neurons that fire together, wire together, and I you know I dove deep into that yeah. because I was always looking to understand how we were getting changes as hypnotists that doctors and psychiatrists that I train didn't even think were possible. Right. And so I always wanted to be able to have a decent conversation <laughs> explaining how it was. And there's so much that we don't typically stress as hypnotists in our training. Yep. And so the other is, how do I have conversations? You know, at this point in my career, um, I would say 90% of my clients come by way of referral from psychiatrists and doctors and therapists. Yeah. So I need to be able to tell them quickly what I'm doing. And if I say, look, we're, we're changing affect to rewire the brain and I teach them five different ways to get out of anxiety and then self hypnosis to start to promote what they want instead, there's not a single doctor that's not going to think that's a good idea. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't mention some of the deeper processes. I'm not going to say, well, we're going to go and we're going to do regression to, they don't want to hear that. Yeah. They don't understand it. Yeah. It sounds scary. Yeah. So yeah. to know how to speak the language is important and a little bit of neuroscience goes a long way. Yeah. You know, I have a, a book I wrote with one of my students called um, keeping the brain in mind. Um, practical neuroscience yep. and so it's how to be a bit more strategic but when I was first learning that you know neurons that fire together wire together that kind of gave me an understanding of how we were building new neural pathways and new neural connections but it didn't tell me how in that one session I was able to get rid of a phobia or I was able to get rid of you know acute serious anxiety Right. Um, that wasn't repetition. So what the hell was going on there? Right. So that's where um, diving deeper into some of the research and, and the research is fairly new on therapeutic memory reconsolidation, which is every time you remember something. Right. Here's the simplest way to describe it. Every time you remember something, it's as if you lift it out of the brain mm -hmm. and it becomes malleable again. And this is happening all the time, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's in its malleable state, we can change certain things. And the one thing that's the easiest thing to change is the emotional track of that right. memory. Right. And then it gets reconsolidated back into the different regions of the brain for long-term memory storage. We've got about a six hour window for full memory reconsolidation to really, uh, 
stick. And so it's pretty um, important that if you're doing change work, you want to make sure that you're hitting, number one, the necessary steps for memory reconsolidation and then shoring it up. Yep. So the cool thing about that is whether you are doing NLP and you're doing, you know, timeline or reimprinting yeah. or NLP patterning, if you're hitting the specific steps, which most people, if they're doing it correctly, are, then you're reconsolidating those emotional memories. If you're doing regression to cause, you're also hitting the necessary st steps for memory reconsolidation. Yeah. Even if you are doing um, EFT, you could be hitting those necessary steps for memory reconsolidation. So you're already doing it. Yep. Now you just want to be able to do it a bit more strategically. Yep. So I teach a conversational form of doing what in essence, a lot of people are doing regression to cause to do memory reconsolidation. Well, I like to show people how you can do it even in a conversational way sure. for those people that maybe don't want to kind of go into that, that deeper state, or maybe they can't seem to access it at the time. But I also teach how even changing how you feel today, like, oh, I have this anxiety every time I, you know, um, go into the boardroom and have to, to, you know, tell my colleagues. If you rewire how they feel in that moment, then what we're starting to understand about the neural network is that it is, right? It's all connected. And it's connected to those early priming memories yeah. so that just by changing today it actually does affect the whole network and that's why people can do tapping or nlp or some other form on something today and not necessarily have to go back in time to get the initial sensitizing event because they're all in the same freaking network yeah so the good news is how many roads are there to change and no one is right and no one is wrong. You know, there's too much infighting in this field. I, I teach at a lot of conferences and I'm always hanging out with um, all types of hypnotists and therapists. And, you know, when I first started teaching and I've been teaching, I don't know, maybe 16 years, um, 17. When I first started teaching, my husband said, you're just doing this so you have people to talk to about this crazy shit and i'm like yeah <laughs> yeah i guess so <laughs> and that's why i love going to this conference you know i get to see people that i you know that i only see but once twice a year and we get to talk about the stuff we love yeah we get to share what we love to do yeah and so um the beautiful thing is by understanding what's happening in the brain it widens out the possibilities for you. It doesn't have to be just this way or just that way. So you don't get those people fighting. No, my way is the right way. No, Erickson had it. No, Elman had it. No, you know, it's like, guys, they all had it. Yeah. You know, like. I, I totally get that. I quit, you know, when I, I, I got certified and I started my career in 2004 and, um, like many excited people, when I first started, I spent a lot of time on the boards, right? Like I was on the different forums online. And within 12 months, I was gone because I got so tired so quickly of that theme running amok through all the different sites of people just defending so fiercely. No, you must do it this way if you really yes. want to have a long and lasting. You know, effect. here's the thing. Here's like, the what thing. are you talking there's about? A, <laughs> there's, a, there's a great quote that says, "You know, convictions are what you get when you stop thinking." <laughs> nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. And anytime I start to feel some of that little bit of, you know, no, no, this, I, I check myself. Yeah. yeah. Because. You know, there's so many, there's so much we don't know. And with all, you know, one of the things that I love doing, I'm a bit of a research junkie. And so in order to justify that addiction, I have to make it practical. 
So I can't just constantly be immersed in this stuff without actually using it. Right. So my favorite thing to do is I'll, I'll read a research study and then I will sit back and I'll be like, what does this mean for my client work? How can I take this idea, this concept and make it practical? Right. Because otherwise it's just information. I can't embody it. And so, you know, it's one of my uh, hobbies. And what that teaches me is that everything that I think is so important, you know, it's, it was my same argument to my daughter about why she doesn't want to get a tattoo at 16. <laughs> I'm like, Jesus Christ, if I, if I would have gotten a tattoo of what I thought was important at 16, God help me. If I had gotten a tattoo about what I thought was important and vital at 20, if I had gotten a tattoo at 30 or 40 <laughs> or 50, which happens sometimes, <laughs> but <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I changed my mind so much that, right. and that's the way I am about this field as well. The one thing I'm always open to is learning because that's why I love this field. Yeah. There's no cap on it. Right, yeah. Paul. There's never a moment where you and I are going to say, well, we've, we know everything there is to know about the brain right. is yeah. never going to happen. You yeah. know, like we know everything there is to know about the mind. Yep. That's so true. So, I mean, that's, I, you know, I, I came from an academic world and I was a teacher and then I went back and I worked at the university. And I think that's what brought me part of what may has made me stay. I've stayed longer in this profession than I've ever stayed in any other job I had. And it's because it never ends. You just keep going and going in that that's right. of learning you can is so just well keep fed. Expanding in any direction too. Yeah. So it's not even just a one track, uh, you know, learning because this can veer into here and all of a sudden I'm learning about, you know, the psychobiology of gene expression. Oh, and epigenetics. Oh, wait. And that yeah. leads me to the microbiome and what the hell. Yeah. Yeah. And that totally. leads me, you know, so years and years ago, I remember um, getting so into the, you know, psycho neuroimmunology and thinking, oh my God, we as hypnotists, we are in the right position for all of this research to really become practical because we have access to the unconscious, you know, processing and systems, you know? So I was excited back then and I was just starting learning yeah. and, uh, you know, so I'm always getting excited about what else can I learn? Yeah. And that's, that's why I too am in this. I, you came from academia. I came from punk rock, you know, I was a musician. Um, and I always joke that, you know, hypnosis is more fun than rock and roll, Yeah, uh, you know, because we never stop learning. Right. Right. And right. I mean, I just turned 50 last month and, um, my, uh, accountant, my tax accountant was like, why aren't you, you know, don't you want to put this money and, you know, for retirement? And I'm like, retire. Why would I do that? Like, I love what I do. I'm yeah. never not going to want to do this stuff. Yeah. That's you know, cool. so yeah. she was like, well, what do you mean? Like, you don't <laughs> want to return. Yeah. Like, she can't. I just, I'm like, not no, my I'm model. Not <laughs> right? Be, like, Your model. About retiring. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good for you. But, you know, it really dawned on me how freaking lucky we are that we are in this amazing field where the thought of retiring is absolutely horrible to me because. What would, you know, like this is fun stuff. So there's always different forms to take, right? And yeah. even if I'm just writing and doing Skype sessions because I moved to a different island, you know, like. Right, right. absolutely. We're cool, right? So. Well, listen, you've covered it. You've covered it. So you guys just, just a re, I'm going to recap for you. We're talking about Saturday, August 12th in the 9 a.m. time slot what no in the 11 in the 11 a.m time you? slot i got it i was in the wrong column all right saturday august 12th in the 11 to 12 50 yes time slot. a much more civilized hour yes yeah much more civilized <laughs> uh rewiring the brain for change on becoming a neuroplastician with melissa tears 
this is, you guys go back and rewatch this because some of the stuff she said, you need to hear again. This is important. This is what we're about in our profession. And this is two hours that you will be well served. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. Awesome. You know, I, I, I definitely loaded up, you know, I've been teaching at this conference for, I think this will be year 15. Wow. I know. Isn't yeah. that amazing? That's cool. Yeah. All right, lady. I will see you in August. Thank you so much for making time for sure. me. Sure. And thank you for being flexible, Paul. I really appreciate no it. No problem. All right. We'll talk. All right. Be well, everybody. I'll see you in August. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.